Welcome back to the channel, folks. This week on Carl's Off the Grid, I've had a lot of requests for people asking me how I bring uh, power into the cabin. So I'm gonna show you a real basic setup that I have. This is gonna be the most basic of setups um, in the most cost-effective way uh, that I have figured out how to bring uh, power into the cabin. For those of you that are homesteaders that have solar ready to your place, don't laugh. I know this is not a real nice elite energy setup. Rather, this is going to be an introductory level solar to uh, set up to solar that you can use for your cabin. And you can see behind me, I have all my solar panels are set up in the uh, in the driveway. It's getting to be a real nuisance. I still haven't mounted them to their final resting ground. Every time I need to charge my battery bank. I have to go through the motions of bringing that big old battery out here, setting it up, uh, connecting it to my charge controller, and then charging it uh, on these panels. Right now, the only thing I have running off my solar is my LED lighting for the cabin, and it uses such little power that I only really charge, and you guys are gonna hang me for this, I only charge my battery probably once every three months. And, uh, I just, I'm glad I did my homework before I got a, a solar setup because now that's leaving me with a whole bunch of unused power that I'm going to be able to turn into luxury items. Uh, maybe, you know, talking about putting in a TV or running a, a small refrigerator. But joining me today, I have the special luxury of having another YouTuber with me. I feel honored to have him join me today. He comes all the way from uh, Upper Minnesota. It's Wandering Wiley. He's got a pretty big channel and he's in the process of building his own cabin. Let's go over by Wiley and I'll introduce you to him. Hey guys. Folks, I'd like to introduce you. Uh, Wiley, he's here. We are both going to go over this solar project together and we're going to see if we can't help teach each other a little bit about. Um, about solar setups uh, today. Wiley's background, he's in the building trades. Um, like I said earlier, he's building a cabin right now on his channel. If you haven't already subscribed to his channel, it's, it's not gonna be a waste of your time. I strongly encourage you go check out what he's got going on. His cabin's a little bit more advanced than what I have here. I'm using a tiny cabin. And uh, Wiley, why don't you tell us a little bit about the cabin that you're building? Well, mine's not so much bigger square footage wise, but it's a little more elaborate as far as 10 foot side walls, loft, full loft, and then uh, there's a eight by 24 foot porch on the one side. And so a total footprint's 24 by 24. So, so it's, it's just under, just under 400 livable square, square foot. feet. So his is, um, I think a lot of you guys are going to be able to relate to it. Um, it's based here in the north. His environment is almost identical to what I have, except for he's maybe a little bit colder than what I have here. But um, we're very similar environments, and I'm excited to get together with him and uh, talk about our cabins, because I think there's a lot that we can both teach each other and uh, hopefully learn from one another. That's the whole idea of coming up here to learn a little bit about the basics of the solar. So that's going to be today's video. We're going to quick show you the basics of what I have for solar. And hopefully this gives Wiley uh, an idea what he's going to need for his solar setup. And hopefully it helps you out as well at home. All right, folks. So basically, here's my control center for my solar. Um, on this main control panel, each one of these toggles controls a different section of the house. The two outside ones control the lights to the loft. The, two, uh, the first uh, two in from that control the family room, living area, and then this uh, fourth one in controls the master bedroom. I have them all individually uh, toggled off here. You can turn them off at these switches, or the lights all have a separate independent switch that you can turn them off at as well. 
Okay, so right now, as a temporary, a very temporary set setup, what I did is I'm guilty of putting the battery inside the cabin. You probably should never do that. It should always be in a well-ventilated place. And I have my charge controller just temporarily rigged up here in a master bedroom. What we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna try to start cleaning up the solar setup. And this is gonna be a multi-part uh, probably video. But today I want to at least explain the basics uh, while Wiley's here so that um, we can uh, kind of give him an idea where he should go with his setup or at least give him an idea what I'm doing. So this charge controller is going to be moved out into the garage. The battery is going to be moved out into the garage. For today we're going to go ahead, we'll install the solar panels on the roof. And then basically what I'm going to do is once this is all moved out into the garage, I'll put it in an area that has uh, an air vent that's uh, there so that it'll be ventilated outside and we don't have to worry if any gases or anything escape from the battery. I know it seems kind of like a far shot because this is a sealed battery and that's why I bought a sealed battery. But every book that I read uh, tells me make sure that you put your battery bank in a well ventilated area. So that's basically how uh, the, my setup is going to work. The inlet comes in from the um, solar panels, it'll go into this charge controller, which is the brains of the outfit. It sends that charge into the battery. And then um, half of my house right now uh, runs directly off of the battery, which is DC power. And then the other half will run off of, I have this small inverter down here by my foot. That's only like an 800 watt inverter. I've been using that just for simple things that I need when I need to charge my batteries for uh, my Milwaukee tools or anything like that, that barely drains any energy. I do have a 2000 watt inverter, which uh, we will install out in the garage too in a later video. So, all right, uh, let's get outside and start hanging some solar panels. And I will i know I've gone over all this information pretty quick, but uh, we'll go over it in greater depth as we start installing the panels. All right, so this is our setup that we're gonna have. Um, let me back up this camera. You can see we put some 1x4s, rough cut lumber, up on the roof. And we made sure that we use screws that have a gasket on it. And then we're simply going to be screwing the solar panels right down into the one by Now, I know a lot of you are going to be curious, and somebody's going to bring up the fact that these solar panels aren't at the exact degree that they need to be into. Uh, relationship with the sunlight but um, they're close enough and like I said I get so much power right now that I'm not using I'm not really concerned about that all right folks so here's how it ends up looking when the panels are up on the roof you can see Wiley went ahead and he put some one by fours uh, rough cut lumber down and then we simply screwed that to the tin we made sure that there was gasket material so we didn't have to worry about any leaks in the roof and then uh, we went and drop it right into the garage so that's going to be our best installation this way we don't have to worry about the uv uh, rays pounding the living heck out of these cables um, everything will be hidden inside the garage other than uh, maybe about 10 inches of uh, of cable that actually connects or wire that connects the panels so, uh, those those wires are UV rated, so I'm not really worried about the sun rotting them. But either way, I I feel better having everything protected and hidden. So this is how we're going to mount the panels. And so all right, that's what it looks like upstairs. Let's go down into the garage, and um, I'll show you what plans we have for that. Okay, cool. All right, guys. So here's what we've got. Um, I've ran out of supplies. It's uh, a weekend again at the cabin, so I'm going to show you what what we've ended up doing uh, temporarily, and then in our either in our next video or else if I can get supplies from somewhere and come back, I'll include it on this video. Um, we have all these two wires here come down from our two solar kits upstairs, and they are uh, put into this joiner which you can also get at Harbor Freight. Uh, one of my subscribers just asked me about this two weeks ago. He got multiple kits and he was wondering if you can connect them all in one system. Yes, you can, and you do it by this device right here. And then this device has one plug that comes out 
and then goes into my extra charge controller. Um, this here, I'm going to go ahead and build a shelving unit in the back of the garage. Uh, right now, I'm just temporarily using a tree stand frame to hold everything up. But uh, I'll put a shelving unit here. I'll leave the uh, battery out here so if any vapors come off it, nobody will be breathing it. And then I'm going to run a line underground from here to the cabin at my junction box that I showed you earlier in the video. And that's where my electric will tie in. And then that way I don't have to move my battery around uh, to get it charged. Right now we've got, uh, it went, turned from a cloudy day to a really sunny day. And we've had this system out in the sunlight and I was talking to Wiley. I think it was out for maybe an hour and a half and my battery was already topped off. And so I'm excited to start utilizing the system and using it more than just my LED lighting because I really want to test out the capabilities. So I hope this little um, video helps you out. It just gives you the basic information for a basic setup. I know there's a lot better setups that are out there, but my channel's all about shopping on a budget and making a cabin on a budget. Here, this is minimal money. I have two Harbor Freight kits. I bought them both on sale for $154 each kit. So that's $300 for the solar panels. They gave me two charge controllers, which you only need one. And then I think this junction box was another $15. And then the most expensive part of your solar setup is going to be your battery. And don't skimp on your battery. You need a deep cycle battery. I love Renergy's batteries. This one here I was able to find on the internet. And I want to say I paid somewhere between six and eight hundred dollars for for the setup. And this makes uh, all the difference in the world. This is like three batteries in one. And uh, I, that's probably why I never run out of power because this is just incredible. So I wish I had a model number on this Renergy battery. I'm going to look through my literature. If I can find the model or the make of this battery, um, uh, whatever Renergy named it, I'll include it in the channel description. But uh, don't skimp when it comes to your battery bank. That's the most valuable part of your whole setup. All right, folks. I just want to thank Wiley for making the trip over. Not we're gonna problem. we're gonna quick grab a, a couple steaks here on the fire, and we got a little bit of corn on the cob there, and I think we're gonna head out to the lake next. I'll probably share a couple scenes of the water with you. For sure, we'll catch the sunset, but uh, hopefully this helps bring a little bit of insight uh, to those of you that have been wondering what we do for solar up here, or if you're looking for solar for your camp. Don't feel you have to go out and buy a, a million dollar Renogy kit right away. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you're paying for a name. And I think that if you get something that's basic, I'm just starting with this setup because it's basic, because I'm new to solar. I don't have a whole lot of money invested into it. And it meets all the needs that I want for my cabin. So, right. Wiley, hopefully this helps you out with your cabin. I know you're going to have a little bit bigger scale yeah, cabin. Yeah, it'll have to be a bigger system, but... Again, this is a nice learning experience on the components and whatnot. So I thank you for that. All right. So any se uh, solar setup, it's basically the same. It has the same components. You got your panels, depending on you know how much wattage you need uh, for your demand. You got your charge controller, your inverters, and your battery. And I think the most important part of the whole thing is don't skimp on your battery bank. These, I'm watching these steaks and they're starting to get pretty dark. So we're going <laughs> to quick eat these steaks. And if the wind dies down a little bit, we're going to hit the lake and enjoy some of the scenery.